You might recognize this face. If you've watched Hallmark movies, if you have seen Wind Calls the Heart, then you know Paul Green. But we are talking to him about his music. Get ready. It's coming up. This episode of Connected with Kelly is sponsored by Pickers Vodka, proudly made in Nashville, Tennessee. So Pickers is a tribute to the musicians whose sounds fill the air in Music City. Pickers Vodka is distilled 11 times from non-GMO corn, and it's gluten-free. My new favorite is the Pickers Unplugged Vodka Soda. They're in cans. They are only 96 calories, zero carbs, great flavors. You need to give them a try. Visit PickersVodka.com to find out more or to order online. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Connected with Kelly. It's a special episode. Today, we're talking with Paul Green. You might know him as Dr. Carson Shepard from When Calls the Heart. He's also been on Hallmark Movies. In fact, someone coined him the Cary Grant of Hallmark movies. He's coming to town for an amazing event at the end of the week. It's Roma Drama. We're going to tell you more about that coming up. But right now, let's get connected with Paul Green. Paul Green, it's so good to meet you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you too. I have uh, looked at your resume and just to see, you know, when they send us these meetings, it's nice to get to know a little bit about, so you've done a ton in Nashville with music stuff. That's kind of your jam, is it? It's my jam. Listen, I am not the Cary Grant of Hallmark. That is you. And I love that they call you that. I love they've coined your phrase because I'm looking through it. I'm like, holy cow, you've got so much happening and it's so great. Uh, but yeah, I do a ton of stuff in Nashville and I do a ton of stuff in music. And I think it's so cool that your world is now part of music too. Has that always been part of your background? Have you always loved music? I grew up, you know, in a church environment. So I was like a church drummer and we went to church way too much for, for my liking as a kid. Uh, you know, and so, and especially when you're part of the worship team, I was there all, and as a teenager, you just want to go play sports. You don't want to be right. inside, but I found a way to make it fun, which was be the drummer. And the drum, you know, I felt like a, I was rebellious and I was so into U2. So I would listen to U2 on my headphones and Larry Mullen Jr., the drummer, and try to be like him. So our church was pretty progressive. So the music was was pretty fun and 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 rock-ish. I mean, not rock and roll, but like yeah. upbeat. So uh, and then, you know, my mom played organ, my dad played guitar, my brother played organ and and they tried to make me play a bunch of instruments as a kid, like trombone and f- recorder and and gu- guitar really young. I have a picture of me at like four years old with a guitar. But um, but yeah, it didn't really hit till I was 18. And uh, then I started traveling the world. I was modeling when I was younger and I'd met a girl who bought me a Bible and a guitar. And it started me on this like songwriting spiritual journey that was for most of my 20s until I I was, you know, uh, for that very important time, I was very dedicated to music and my Bible as as a as a as a young as a as an early 20s person. (laughs) Please, please tell me that you've written a song called The Girl Who Gave Me a Bible and a Guitar, because that's a country song. It's happening. It's happening. You're not the first person. Every time I tell that story, there's like, is there a song for this? And I actually have it started. I just haven't finished it. But yes, okay. there, there will be. She bought me a Bible and a guitar. And then, you know, and the rest is history because there's there's a big uh, there's a big story behind it all. That's that's be really. And, and I I was traveling so much around the world and the guitar became came mm. with me everywhere. So I was pr- very prolific. I think I read like 40 or 50 songs in my 20s. And was re- releasing little mini albums along the way, but you know that was before you could, like just little pieces, and and I have them. I've never really released them, but then it wasn't until a couple years ago that I did a concert at Carnegie Hall for Kate Winslet's um, Autism Foundation, mm-hmm. and I was doing a film with Tim Janis uh, who. Uh, and in, it is really neat because Dick Van Dyke was in this Chris is a Christmas movie I did. This is how I got back into music like full time is uh, Angela Lansbury and Dick Van Dyke were in this Christmas movie called Buttons with me. And at the end of it, I was telling the director I made music and I showed him on my YouTube a cover of Hallelujah that I did. The, yeah. 
because Leonard Cohen's a big a big influence of mine. And and after he heard it, he said, "Do you want to do that Hallelujah at Carnegie Hall?" And and I was like, "What?" <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, I do. And that sounds terrifying and amazing. Terrifying and amazing. But it started me on this, you know. And there's a hundred person choir and two hundred part symphony. I'm sorry, the other way around, 100 person symphony and 200 part choir. When I got off the stage from Carnegie Hall, I had so much joy and excitement. And I was like, that's it. I'm going to record a new album. And then I finished my the album that's out now, Freedom for Your Soul. Um, I finished within three months of, of Carnegie Hall. And uh, that really started my uh, uh, my journey back to, to music. And then because of the movies I do, there's a fan base there that likes that will listen to my music because it's nice to have actually an, somebody who'll buy and and come to your shows and actually there's a big audience through Wing Calls a Heart and Hallmark and some of my other shows I've done that it's nice to be able to make music that people will you know that will I get discovered sometimes first through the movies and then uh, and it's slowly starting to shift where people are finding the music first and it's just starting to become more like uh, they, they really help each other though yeah. Do you have a preference when someone's walking up to you and they say, I know you from, and they fill in the blank, like, oh, you're, you're Dr. Shepard, or I love your music. Which one hits you in the heart harder? I love your music would be, would be a heart, a harder heart hit. Like if yeah. someone's like, I found your music, you know, on Spotify or on, you know, I heard, or I heard you on YouTube playing or some, or, or Carnegie Hall, those I, I would say music is is that that's exciting when someone's like I love you for your music but it's we're you know I'm very proud of the TV and film stuff yeah. I get to do as well but yeah well and and it's interesting because I being an outsider that has mainly really lived in the music world and in the country music world specifically looking at the storytelling aspect of how country music is and what really you know defines a country music song and then looking at somebody who takes on a part in you know an incredible play or if it's going to be a tv series I think it's still just a different form of storytelling to me it's what it looks like to me and I I wonder if that's what it feels like to you it is. I mean, I f songwriting is so much more intimate because it's often told from inside the 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 journey. Like, like you're sort of almost like telling a story. Whereas a character, you're you're one of the characters usually in the story. So there's a it's similar, but it's uh, I feel singing is more intimate, or songwriting is a little bit more intimate in the sense that you're 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 the one narrating the story. Where often with TV and film, you are the one that you're the character that's being you're, that's helping tell the story. So. But it's fun to also tell the uh, to write a song from a character point of view too. So yeah, I, you're right though. They really, I think they they go. It's 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 no wonder there's so many musicians that are actors, and there's so many actors that also play music and like are you know that, that it's it's there there's there are really a, a ton of them like that. And it's you know when you look at rappers too, that just become some of the best actors that there are. It's yeah. really interesting. I, I find it, I'm so grateful to be doing two things that I love this much. Like I really love doing both. What's the difference in a performance as well? Because I think that's interesting. And and as you mentioned, we have friends in the country world. You know, I'm thinking Lauren Elena specifically right now. She's always been known for music and is incredible, but she's dipping her toe in the acting pool. We've seen Carrie Underwood do The Sound of Music live on NBC. So we do have those in our world over here in Nashville that are are attempting to do a little bit more acting and, and kind of branch out. What is it about that do you feel you can draw on from being a performer on stage as an artist? I, is there a similarity there? Are you putting on a character sometimes when you have to sing? I do my best to not do a performance in either realm. This is what I mean by that. Like I do my best to more like really if create an experience for somebody and 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 create a canvas for them to project and have whatever emotion they want so meaning like there's you know there's people that are just performers and you're like that was a great performance and then there's those where you're totally moved by because you can tell that person is being moved by what they're doing so I really lean more towards uh, not trying to like 
have an have an have a performance rather than I like to create an authentic experience that I'm in. And it's it's very they they seem similar, but there's like I guess the difference is if you're if you're acting and you're trying to like to give this big performance, it's really terrible. Like you honestly just have to be honest in the moment, vulnerable. And, and if you're nervous, like even share that you're nervous with the audience and just be like, I find at least that's my approach is to come under it and, and, and take them with me on a journey rather than like, look at me, I'm up here giving this performance, like, please like it. Like that's, yeah. that's, I find that's my worst place to be for either acting or on stage. It's much more like, all right, we're in this together. Let's experience something authentic and original and beautiful and then we'll just the result is out of my control I'm just going to do the very best that I can to do it honestly and authentically and then if it and, and you know there's there's elements of performance which is like charisma I guess and energy but if you focus on that then I find it can just be like there's there's a million great performers but how many people really like just grab you and just like wow like yeah take, take you so that's what I'm sort of looking towards Tell me who you're listening to right now. Like if I just looked at your playlist, what would it look like? Coulter Wall, who's a Canadian. If you don't know him, do you know Coulter Wall? I don't. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. So, Hold on. Cool. Writing it down. Writing it down. Coulter Wall. I'm, I'm just going to ask uh, my beautiful fiance to bring my charger because I think my laptop's going to. Um, um, hey, sweetheart. Yeah. I think my laptop's going to die. Would Do you see my charger up there? <laughs> Okay. This is real life. I love it. Yeah. 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 I just realized I'm in my studio here. This is where I do podcasts from and, and some of my lives, I do lives up on the roof too, but, um, and, and, and then we do other things downstairs. So I'm like, where's my charger? Uh, uh, so I'm listening to Coulter Wall, who is really came on the scene when he was 19 or 20. And he's got a voice like Johnny Cash. If you dipped it in whiskey and lit it on fire. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He, 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 you've never quite heard a voice like like this guy. I mean, it's uh, he's so he's a big influence. Uh, he's actually a cowboy from Saskatchewan, which is the province next to the one I grew up in. Um, I grew up in Alberta, Canada. Mm -hmm. So he sings like prairie songs, but they're just and he does murder ballads, which is you know I guess Johnny Cash did a lot of murder ballads, which Folsom Prison is like you start with the characters in prison and you sort of tell why they're there. Um, but if you haven't heard Coulter Wall, I'm, your life's about to change. I've never felt like when he sings, I'm just like, whoa, what is this? So he's a big influence and he's, a, you know, the way he picks and he's just, he's just awesome. So Coulter is a big influence recently. Always Leonard Cohen, always Johnny Cash, uh, D Bob Dylan. There's not a lot of new artists that I really listen to. Uh, Coulter's one of the ones I found recently, but I'm Early U2 was a massive influence for me because that was all I was allowed to listen to because I grew up so Christian. I could trick Joshua my mom. Tree. <laughs> yeah, I could trick yeah. my mom. I'm like, look, mom, it says in God's country on it. It's Christian. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and then uh, unwittingly, the Gaither Quartets has been the yes. massive influence just because my parents listen to it every minute of the day and yeah. videos like of them and so I hear four part harmonies and I use a, I use when I perform, I use this looping pedal. So I will do like a, the melody. And then on the, as the second chorus comes around, I'll do like a third or a fifth. And then the final chorus will be bigger. And then if there's a fifth chorus, I can add rhythm and stuff. So I, I build, um, and then I, I'm always going for that quartet sort of, four part harmony by the end of some of my loops when I perform live. So that that's become, I realize the, the Gaithers and like has, has a massive impact on like the sound that I go for. <laughs> no, I love that. Um, yeah. The Gaither homecoming, look, you're coming to the right city, coming to Nashville. You're going to be in the middle of it. And I believe that we're the home of the barbershop quartet um, organization. Like they've got a place downtown Nashville. So you need to go see it when you're here and you are coming. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm excited to come. I have some friends there that are in the industry. Uh, and also there's a ministry there called PR Ministries. Michael Guido would, would tour with every 
rock band, like from I don't know Bon Jovi to then a lot of Christian rock bands too. And I've been connected to that. It's called PR Ministries. And he would, he's like a road pastor, like a rock pastor. So he would go on the road with the musicians to help them stay accountable to their wives and to their promises. And like, you know, being on the road for months at a time, you sort of need that accountability. And so I'm excited to see them. And I'm actually doing a fundraiser for them. Uh, my brother's bringing a painting that we're going to auction. My brother's a really great artist. And during the event and at my concert, we're going to do an auction for to raise some money for them. So there's, I'm excited to come. I really love Nashville. Oh my gosh. Well, we are super excited to have you. I mean, I feel like I could talk to you forever. I do want to ask before I let you go, um, because you have been in so many different projects for Hallmark. I mean, When Calls the Heart, I know is where so many people know you from. Is there a specific character or a specific movie that you truly just loved as your favorite? It's so hard to pick. I mean, I played a male nurse in a movie called Anything for Love. And um, and it was it was just really quirky. And Erica Christensen was my co-star in it. And it was my mom was a nurse. So I I said, what are male nurses like? And she's like, what do they do? And she's like, nothing. They're lazy. So I was like, I, when I did the prep for my character, I, my mom has been a nurse, was a nurse for 45 years. Uh, when I look back, that one's really, I just love the movie because it's it's very it's funny and it's, it's very, um, uh, people really enjoy that movie. But Christmas Detour is a Christmas movie I did that everybody uh, and has seen. Like I have some fans that have seen it 150 times. I'm not exaggerating in there. Um, so I'm just, pr I'm really proud of all of it. And then there's the movies and the shows along the way. Like I worked with Sofia Coppola on a film called Somewhere. And it's like, there's these doors that get opened by every project almost like opens the door to other projects mm -hmm. and I was discovered on Bitten which is a werewolf thing that one of the executives at Hallmark saw me on it and offered me my first movie with Danica McKellar for Hallmark so it's like it's a really it's it's such a interesting business because every there you, you you need all the all the little there's no like little job because they somebody sees it and they're like that guy's perfect for the project that we're creating and uh I can't really pick one. Like it's hard. And, and Dr. Carson, you know, the cool thing about being a one calls a heart for five years now is the fans and the Hardies are the fans that follow it. And it's so personal because my grandmother knew personally the woman who wrote the books of when calls a heart, they grew up in the same town as teenagers in Northern Alberta. And then when I got offered the part, I was like, Jeanette Oak, I at, reached out to her and she knew my grandmother as a teenager, which is just wild. And there's a lot of serendipity and, uh, and you know, it's created from Michael Land and Junior. So mm -hmm. a lot of the people that loved Little House on the Prairie really love our show. And I grew up with Little House on the Prairie. So there's Me like, too. you know, yes, you too, right? So yeah. who honestly, who didn't? Uh, and so being a part of that is is just the amount of fans and the support of the fans is just phenomenal and just shout out to the hardies because they're amazing and i think that one's the most impactful role is dr carson just because of the fans and and the show and you know it's interesting too because i feel like the last few years especially anything uh with Hallmark, you know, the movies have taken on a life of their own. The people that have been watching it just fall in love with it. And as you said, like they've watched it 150 times, some of them. So why do you think that is? What is the draw to it? I mean, I know why I love watching them. I know how it makes me feel. And I feel like maybe that's what everybody is looking for is that feel good. But do you feel the same way? You think that's why the popularity has continued to grow? Well, why do you why do you love watching because it makes you feel good right yeah i think it's a healing remedy for uh, a world that's quite um squirrely right now like meaning like if you turn on it's so divisive everywhere whether it's whatever news you watch uh, whatever you listen to on the radio it feels like it's so divisive and 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 the and hallmark channel specifically is like a safe zone where people they're not going to get smashed with politics they're not going to get there it's going to be a place where they can kind of like kids can come in grandma can watch it everybody can sort of it can it's something that really brings people together 
uh, and it's a bit of a healing balm in a world that at the moment seems to be quite divisive and quite yeah. polarizing. So uh, I think that's why it's so successful. And there's a and there's a formula like there's people know what they're they know what they're going to get. There's a few surprises, but mostly they know the guy's eventually going to get the girl and uh, and they're going to get the kiss and they're going to get that that feeling of like, oh, maybe maybe things will work out for me. It worked out for those characters. And I think it actually introduces them back to some hope in like love and hope and family and things like that. All the good things. Listen, I am so excited about you coming into town. Rama Drama is going to be so much fun. I can't wait to meet you in person. That's right. You're doing our panel, right, with Rob? Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. I just, I've been speaking to Rob, uh, and he, uh, I really like his music too. Are you going to be? You're going to? Are you going to come to Rob's concert? Are you going to come to my concert too? I sure hope so. I'm coming on Friday night. Saturday night, my daughter is in Sound of Music, so I will not be able to be there because she's Brigitte in Sound of Music. So how exciting is that? A live play? She's yeah, doing? yeah. She does a lot of live theater, so it's gonna be good. It's gonna be really, really good. Well, I can't wait to meet you, and I hope that when you're here, you really do get some some great contacts with all the people on Music Row because this is what you're doing. If you if you are already in love with music so much and songwriting this is just the mecca of it have you been here in songwriting before have you done any songwriting in town no but i just you know rob mays introduced me to a friend of his that's you know i'm trying to wrangle him in to do pedal steel for my show um and you know the good pedal steel players can just pick up whatever oh. they wouldn't even need my my set list or my my chart to just be like mm, just do right. it so uh, and and then that's it's also a producer of Rob. So I'm, there's a few things that and then Rob's friend owns. Oh, I'm blanking on that. It's like a, it's it's every it's actually Friday night. It's a songwriter's mm-hmm. like three. You do three songs. It's almost like an open mic. But and he told me the name. Do you know what I'm talking about? What this is? There's Whiskey Jam that's on Mondays, and then there's um, another one that's downtown that's on Wednesday nights. I don't know the one on Friday nights, but it's, yeah, there are so many of those and they are so incredible. Have you ever been in a songwriter's round like that before? No, no. And so I got a feeling I'll be spending some time between both places, especially oh if I gosh. start listening to this because I'm writing my next album and I'll be doing some here in LA and probably some of the stuff there in Nashville too. So I'll be there. I'll be there more. We got to get you plugged in for sure. It's just, it's such an amazing place, such an incredible community. And yeah, these are your people. You'll love it. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Well, um, so your R- Rama Drama starts on this, the Friday and, and yeah. Saturday, and there's a little bit of events on Sunday as well. Yeah. Too. So I have some fans flying from Europe to the concert. I have two coming from the United Kingdom that are braving COVID, are figuring out how to do it, and they're flying like for, uh, yes, Jeanette, Jeanette and Timmy are coming from all the way from Europe for they've been to every one of my live shows because during this last year and a half I've done 280 live streams yeah. yeah and they've been to every single one and then when they found out I was doing a live concert they're like we're coming I'm like if you're coming from London <laughs> I love that I love that I love that I actually host a podcast called Holler Weekly and my co-host is in London and we talk about all the things country Americana and roots music and what's different about it in London and what's, you know, similar in Nashville. It's really fun. Wow. That sounds, is there any big artists that do Americana and like country music from London? Um, you can think of, I mean, is, is, uh, is what's his name? that does The river. Is he from London? No. Um, the Shires are from London and they're amazing. So that would be one that I would tell you. And then um, John Osborne's wife. Is Leon, Leon Bridges is, yeah. Yes, that is correct. I find that. I, find I, find correct. that, I feel like that's roots music and like yeah. gospel. And and I'll tell you who's so cool that lives right next to us is Keb Moe. I don't know if you're into blues at all, but Keb Moe is like prolific blues man. And he is our neighbor here in town. I mean, it's so crazy. This is such a great community. It's such a great city, especially for music. Um, But yeah, there's so much happening. Americana is blowing up. Americana to me is what old country was, you know, like if you really, I mean, like, you know, they, they classify Loretta 
as Americana now. So, what, so. Would, what would define Americana from from what you're? I'm just writing so, down Kedmo, K E D M O E, K E B Keb, and then Keb. a hyphen Kedmo. Yeah. Okay, got it. I'm on it. Blues man, you'll dig him. Um, Lucy Silvis is another one that's from the UK that is just prolific. She's amazing. She's married to John Osborne from Brothers Osborne. Um, but yeah, just in town, man, it's crazy. It, and it's such a small city and also a big town, you know, all the, all of those things all together. Like everybody knows everybody else. Everybody swaps producers, everybody's songwriting with somebody else. Like there are four or five songwriters that, you know, they're going to have a credit on every album that comes out, which is, it's just incredible. You know, it, it really is. But also it's, you know, totally normal to run into people at the grocery store. Nobody says anything. It's just a, it's just a deal. Like that's, that's what we know. We love everybody else. Somebody's in the music industry that, you know, and yeah, it's, it's just such a cool vibe. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to being there more and um, especially coming for this Roma drama. And then uh, I hope to see, well, I'll definitely see you at our panel, but then yeah. uh, hopefully I'll see more of you too. I will be around. Um, my mother-in-law loves you and she's coming into town. She was, she's in love with When Calls the Heart. So she is absolutely in love with you. And if you would say hi to Candy, I will send her the video. Okay. Hi, Candy. <laughs> is, she, is Candy coming to Rama Drama then or no? She's going to be in town because she's going to watch her granddaughter at Sound of Music. So, oh, so if, she, well, if they get here early, I'll bring them on Friday. You should. I'd love to meet Candy. She would love it. Like she and Byron, her husband, watch it all the time. So I, and I haven't even told her that I was talking to you yet. She's going to freak out. That'll be great. Send, me, Send great. me your email and I'll just shoot her a personal little video that's saying hi to her. Like I'll just say, hey, Candy. Uh Oh, she'd love it. She would love it. I'll send it to you. I will send it to you. Well, I can't wait to meet you in person. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Good to meet you too. We'll see you soon. Okay. Roma drama. It is happening in Franklin. I'm going to put all of the information and where you can get tickets in my show notes. I'm going to be there on Friday night. So if you guys want to come out and say hi, incredible panel of artists. We have amazing singers that are going to be there as well. My friend Cassidy Pope is a part of that. So get your tickets and come on out. I want to know your favorite Hallmark movie. Do you have one that you just love? I know I've got a lot, but I want to hear yours. Put it below in the comments. Make sure you hit the bell and subscribe. That way you'll be notified when we put out new episodes. That happens each and every week. Until then, make sure you're staying connected with all the people and things you love the most. Bye.